This is Module 10, Panel Startup. When starting up a system, there are several steps, not all of which have to be followed. I'm going to lay out those steps, and then we will dive into each one of them and look at them a little more closely. Step 1, install the software. Step 2, address and install all SLC devices and P-Link devices. Step 3, run the Learn via the control panel. Step 4, connect control panel and PC via an Ethernet cable. Step 5, upload the data into the computer. Step 6, customize the program as needed. And Step 7, download the configuration file to the control panel and test the system. Starting first, looking at Step 1, installing the software. The software can be found on our website, www.pottersignal.com. Once you have the software installed, you can move on to Step 2. Step 2, address install all SLC devices and P-Link devices. For detailed information on the SLC devices, the P-Link devices, and how to address them, please refer to modules 3 through 6. Once you have them addressed and connected to the SLC circuit and the P-Link circuit, you will have several troubles on the fire alarm control panel. The number of SLC devices connected to the fire alarm control panel should match the number of troubles you see on the LCD screen. The trouble indicated by a device connected to any of the SLC circuits, which is not programmed into the system, is an extra device. This is a good troubleshooting tool. If, for example, you've installed, say, nine devices on your SLC circuit and you only see seven troubles, we already know that there's a problem with the installation. Once that step is accomplished, we can move on to step three. Step three is optional. You do not have to run the learn function via the fire alarm control panel. However, running the learn is also a good troubleshooting tool. For detailed information on how to run the learn from the fire alarm control panel and the default characteristics for all the devices, please check out the learn video that you can find on our website. After running the learn function, the next step would be to connect the control panel to your PC with an ethernet cable. Either a straight through patch cable or a crossover cable will work. When that connection is made, the panel and the computer will work to make a private network. The LCD screen of the fire alarm control panel will say obtaining IP. It will then say private IP. It will then change to IP configured and it will go between the IP address that it has been assigned and IP configured for about 10 seconds. The IP address that the panel will obtain on startup for the first time is 169.254.150.70. This IP address can be changed and that is done in LAN settings of the programming software. In order to upload the information from the panel to the computer, we either need to know the IP address or the NetBIOS. Again, the IP address is 169.254.150.70. The NetBIOS can be found on a sticker inside the fire alarm control panel on this heat sink, as you can see here. The first time you try and communicate with the fire alarm control panel, it is recommended that you use the IP address. You also want to make sure that the IP address of the computer is similar to the IP address of the fire alarm control panel. For example, if the IP address of your computer is 10.15.0.153, it is not going to communicate with the fire alarm control panel that is a 169.254.150.70. For information on finding out the IP address of your computer, as well as changing the IP address of your computer, please refer to the IP Troubleshooting Tools video. Once the panel has obtained the IP address, you are now ready to go on to step 5, uploading the data to the computer. Opening up the programming software, you can upload the data into the computer, and at this point we can move on to step 6, which is customizing the program as needed. The programming software allows you to define all the system settings, assign custom messages to all the devices, set up all your keypad user passwords and their accessibilities, set up all the email reporting, configure the IP reporting and the dialer reporting, configure all your network settings, and map all of your inputs and outputs to create an operational system. Once we are done customizing it, we can then download the configuration file back into the fire alarm control panel, test it, and your system will be ready to go. For detailed information on customizing the program, please refer to the recorded modules on the programming software. We have made it through step 7 of panel startup. Information on many of these steps can be found on our website, such as addressing and installing all of the SLC devices and P-Link devices, a video that is on our website on the learn function, as well as all of the videos that pertain to the programming software. You can also refer to the installation manual for more information. The next module in the series is Module 11, PCOM Network Connection.